Hello, everyone. I have the best guest ever. Aww. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm fine, Teal. You're would, so nice. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Mike Stout. Uh, I worked a little bit on this game, and I worked on the first three Ratchet games. Yes, uh, you did. I've also worked on the the first three Sky, four Skylanders games, the first four Skylanders games. Mm. Yeah, um, well, we've got a ton of questions, as I destroy everything with the Mega Supernova, and it levels up in seconds. Oh, um, and Resistance. I worked on Resistance. Yes, you did. Me. Yes. And that, that blew everything up. Yeah, it's this weapon is awesome, <laughs> if you haven't realized already, but as it levels up three times in the space of, you know, seconds, <laughs> it, four times. It's just insane. It's well, the rhino, insane. the rhino and weapons like that, they were always supposed to be broken. The yeah. idea was, if you had enough money or resources to afford it, you've probably already beaten the game. So we just wanted you to do whatever was fun. Yeah, that, that's fair. Uh, well, I mean, we've got a bunch of questions. Uh, the first one, um, it's it comes from uh, Mike Dodger Stout. Um, oh, who, who how, is this stranger? Um, how is Mike so handsome yet intelligent and charismatic at the same time? And obviously humble. Uh, uh, um, yeah. How is he all of those things? That's a that's an important question. Yes, I think it's the the crux of this entire interview kind of thing. I think it, it might be it might be too long of an answer to contain in one interview, so we might need to do it next time. Oh, okay, right. I see. I understand. That that, that makes sense. I, I but it is it. an important question. And I'm glad that that stranger asked it. Yes. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's the real question that we we all want to know. It's, yes. Um, but um. I mean, if if that stranger didn't ask, I'm sure. Thousands of others would have. So, uh, yes. uh, ultimately, um, you know that that question will get answered one day, and I'm sure everyone will love the answer. But uh, and, until that day, um, we have other questions. Um, we have many, many questions. Uh, we also have just this thing that will destroy everything and level up to 99 in a couple of worlds' time. So. Uh, yeah, uh, why don't oh. you talk a little bit about, first off, wh what what this game originally was. Like, <laughs> this game changed, what, twice, did you say? Yeah, well, well one thing I want to say is I did work on the level you're in right now. Yes, yes, you did tell me that. That's why I stopped uh. here and decided, oh, to, okay. decided to, like, start and show off this level. Because it's, the, like, the one of, one of the... T well, did you say you worked on two levels, or was it three? I worked on uh, this level, and I worked on the hub level, like oh, the, okay. where you go back. Yeah. And so I did like that initial training segment where you, where Al tells you to look up and down. Right. And I see. Okay. Uh, and I did this level, although uh, it changed a lot after, uh, like after, because what I only worked on the first half of this game, and then I went to work on Resistance's multiplayer. Right. Uh, so I, I missed the second half. Uh, so someone else took over all of these things and did actually most of the hard work and <laughs> done. <laughs> uh, so I, I I remember these, you know, in terms of what I originally did on them, but I don't remember a lot about what they, how they ended up. Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, you were you were asking about what the game originally was. So we we had ended Ratchet Three, and uh, we all wanted to do something no. different because we felt like. Uh, Ratchet 3 was, you know, it was that was a really good game, mm. right? And we wanted, we, we thought, okay, we we finally made the Ratchet game that we really wanted to do because it was, you know, um, it was so great. Let's try doing something different. So we started working on a racing game, like a kart racer, Ratchet kart racer, and we had made a number of vehicles. Uh, the, I, it was like, um, oh, what's that combat racing game? Uh, Jack X. Killer. Well, I'll tell you about that in a second. But no, Killer. Uh, not Killer Instinct. Uh, I can't even remember the name of it. Oh, oh well. Um, oh God, Instinct. I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, well, it'll come to us in a second. But it was it was supposed to be a combat thing, not like a, a lap. Right. Like Mario Kart sort of thing. Okay. So we had made we had made all these interesting combat vehicles like Twisted for example, Metal. A, Twisted Metal. That's the one. Like a spider tank, or. You know, a buggy that drove around with a with a gun. Like we made all these really cool vehicles, mm. and uh, a couple months in, we found out about Jack X, yeah. and it just made no sense to release two racing games in the same same time from the same publisher. 
because then the publisher would be competing with itself, right? Yeah. So we shifted gears to work on another Ratchet game, but because we still wanted to do something different, we wanted to make it kind of like a non-linear battlefields, like in Ratchet, the, the, the mini game in Ratchet 3 where you'd sort of defend areas, mm. but make them like bigger maps where you could go in different directions and solve different objectives. And uh, we, we, we tried that for a couple months and uh, we just couldn't make it work. So we ended up retrofitting everything to be sort of more linear and more like a Ratchet game. So then, and of course, we had all these cool vehicles that we made, so those needed to feature prominently in the game also. Yeah. So that's sort of like, you can see the recipe for how the game was built to be the way it is. It's not a fully linear, like, uh, Ratchet game, and it's not like one of the Ratchet games where we've, you know, we've, we've constructed all the paths so carefully and, and put, you know, a lot of hidden secrets on the outsides and stuff like that. It ended up being kind of a hybrid of the Battlefield model and our linear Ratchet level model. Uh, and uh, people didn't seem to like it as much as they liked Ratchet 3, but it's still, you know, it's like got like an 86% on Metacritic or something. It's still so, impressive. Yeah, people did like it. It just mm. wasn't... You, you're not going to find a lot of people who said this was their favorite Ratchet game. There are a few people who've told me in the uh, comments that this is their favorite. That's awesome. So, I mean, I, I mean, like that's the thing. And there's a, there's a different game for everyone. Some people. It's like Majora's it. Mask, right? Like yeah, some people. Yeah, I love hate Majora's Mask. Mask. I love it too, but we're definitely not in the majority. Yeah, thing. No, some people are Ocarina of Time is the greatest thing ever, and it's good, but I think it's flawed in many ways, personally. I think and... the best Zelda game they ever made was the one they just made on the DS. That was a sequel to Link to the Past. Oh, uh, Link Between Worlds. Yeah. Oh man, that was yes. just the best. And then Link, uh, Link to the Past is probably the second best. Yeah, no, that is an absolutely fantastic game. I, I those, love that game. Those two games are in my top five video games of all time really? in terms, of, in terms of game design. Yeah, like that Super Metroid, uh, and uh, probably some other ones I'm not thinking of off the top of my head. Didn't you? Um, I can't remember if it was you tweeted it or mentioned it in an article or something. But you like, um. Like you, maybe it was a video, in fact, and maybe it was a podcast. You mentioned something about Zelda having like the same formula for every dungeon, or something. Oh, like, it's not. It's not a formula. What it is is, uh, they understand that it's it's more important that the the player feel smart than that they be smart. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, the 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 point of the design is to make the player feel like they're solving a, a really complicated puzzle without actually letting because solving complicated puzzles are not is not actually that exciting for yes. most people it m mainly you want to make them feel like that and zelda does that better than almost anybody all of your favorite zelda puzzles are like that mm. and then well there's going to be a, a, a another number of people who really like the hard puzzles and this is this is obviously not the way to design a game for those people but uh, uh zelda in general is not trying to hit those people you know yeah uh, but uh, for, for the for the kind of people who aren't like that, uh, you really want to feel... But you don't ever want to feel like you're not solving a puzzle, like you're just doing a laundry list, right? Because then that's that gets boring and, you don't, like, why would you even try? So what, what I said was a lot of their dungeons are rooms full of levers that only move in one direction. Yeah, that's right. So you're... You, you basically... There's a very logical setup for how the puzzle would be solved so what you do is in your mind you say okay I know that I need to go over here is kind of my first goal and then I, that's gonna somehow get me over there and then I'm gonna win right mm -hmm. and so you you go through in your head what resources you have and you try them you know like so you're solving a puzzle but it's not a puzzle like uh, lateral thinking you know mm -hmm. what I mean like, uh, you know like those IQ questions they ask you on standardized tests you know like what's the next number in this sequence mm -hmm. and then they they set it up in such a way that it's really difficult to get the right answer yeah uh, it, that's a difficult uh, sorry not difficult that's a different type of problem solving uh, so the, the Zelda games they what they usually do are it's problem solving but in a way that in a way that you, you you won't get screwed over for not being able to read the designer's mind because hmm. reading the designer's mind isn't really a skill-based activity, right? Yeah. This is really hard, by the way. 
Even with your super weapon of Yes, doom? I'm getting killed in two hits. So wow. I would not like to do this wrench only. In fact, I would despise it. It would be horrible. Is this the highest level? Uh, no, it's only rank three. God knows what it's like on the highest. This was the first Ratchet game that did selectable difficulty. Yeah, it was. I think, did tools do it? I don't think so. I think it was just uh, this and Crack in Time. I, uh, for some reason, thought it was like it was either originally going to go in tools or something, but the because in all of the previous three games, we didn't let you select difficulty. We just tuned it dynamically, dynamically based on what we saw the players doing. Right. But uh, in this game, you could choose, and it would set like the range of of what what the difficulty tuning system could go to. Right. So if you pick easy. It can only go between difficulty zero and five, right? Mm. And if you pick hard, it can only go between difficulty 15 and difficulty 13 or something, right? Right. So picking hard still gets you a harder game, but we still tune the dynamically tune the game within the your selection so that we get it feeling right, if that makes sense. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, this is... I, I just... I've given up using the... the Rhino only. It's not Rhino, but given up using that, I'm gonna use the Landstalker. I think that's what you're supposed to. Be it doing. is, but I wanted to use the Rhino because I did it. The I, I have played through this already, uh, and uh, like a week ago, and I did it fine with the Rhino. Not today though. <laughs> this Spider Tank is super cool, man. Like, yeah, it's really hard to do something like that on the PlayStation 2. And mm. the fact that I think it was done by uh, Carl Glaive, I think was the programmer's name. And, uh, like, the fact that that thing can... Because, like, look, when you walk up a little slope, this, you'll see how its its arm does... Like, it, it moves up higher than the other legs. Yeah. And, like, it always bends its elbow in the right way. It's called IK, and that shit was not easy to do on the PlayStation right. 2. Like, so it was, it was crazy that he was able to do it for four legs at the same time. Mm. So did... When, the, when it was originally a racing game... Um, or a racing type game, combat game. Um, it was about a month and a half. Right, I was going to say, did it did it originally have a title or a project name? or, or was it No, just... I, think, I think we called it RCR, Ratchet Racing. Fair enough. Were there any, um, like, apart from obviously Ratchet and Clank, were there any uh, characters that were nailed down um, to be playable? or? No, there wasn't anything like that. Fair enough. Uh, they they were just trying to get what the different vehicles would be. Because mm. I was gonna say the vehicles feel amazing in this game. Like, like it yeah, makes had, a lot of sense. But this we is had the most one. time to work on them. Yeah. And yeah. There were a bunch of people who spent a lot of time on them in pre-production, so they they got to uh, very polished. Mm. The level designs probably had the least amount of time to be completed because we, you know, first designed racing areas, right? Mm. Then designed. The non-linear battle areas, and then sort of retrofitted the non-linear battle areas to be linear missions, right? Yeah. So it was uh, uh, on level design is probably where we had the strongest pinch because we changed it twice. Yeah, that that makes sense. But the vehicles definitely, there's a lot of time spent on those, and uh, one of the other thing we spent a lot of time on was uh, enemy pathfinding. Like just the enemies being able to get around these big environments oh, is not something. It's not something we could have done in any of the other Ratchet games because we didn't have any pathfinding. Right. Okay. Uh, like it, we all, it was all smoke and mirrors, right? The enemies had no idea where anything was. Right, it was okay. a miracle if they could get to you, and we just made that. Work. <laughs> uh, whereas in this game, they not only can they find you in an area, they can go between different areas and stuff, and that took. Uh, a whole year of work from one programmer to get working. This just leaped from 76 to 80 in a second. <laughs> Damn. This is the most powerful weapon in the game, and it leaps that quickly. That's insane. And it'll get the most powerfuler. Y yeah. <laughs> yes, it will. Uh, so I guess, well, we got some questions to answer. So uh, first by Bram Delport. Um... Uh, well, his first question was Ratchet Gladiator Deadlocked an instant idea or their thoughts of a Ratchet Racing game-esque thing, which you've already answered. Um, 
Uh, will the Scorpion Flail come back in a future game? Because he really likes that weapon, which is understandable since it's broken as all hell. I have no idea. Yeah, that's... Yeah. 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 Not everything you will be able to answer, for obvious I mean, reasons. like, I, I've told you that I worked on the PS4 Ratchet yes. game, and I, I don't know what weapons are in that yeah, game. Yeah, you've worked on something. Yeah, that. so... They, it's compartmentalized, right? I, I'm not since I'm not working at Insomniac now. I don't have that all, all that information. Yeah. And if I did, I wouldn't be able to say. Yeah, that's very true. Um, yeah, but there, I there are some don't... things you can tell us, like things which are public knowledge. Uh, but beyond that, yeah. you are limited. Um, yeah, I can elaborate on anything that's public knowledge yeah. or anything that, where the non-disclosure has expired, which is usually like five years after it comes out. <laughs> so not not quite yet. Um, yeah, that which which is why I can talk about Deadlock because it's been long enough, you know. It's weird that it's a five year like thing. Well, the idea is you don't want to interfere with the game's uh, with the game's profitability period, which is usually in, for for most games is like the first year. Mm. Then you, for some games, when they go greatest hits in the second year, they'll right. they'll get another bump, yeah. and then the third, right? So if if you go five years, you've got a good window to make sure that. Anything anybody says won't really negatively affect the game. I don't see how, like, saying, oh, this was going to be in the game, but time made it, like, get cut. Like, it's a hugely negative thing, but... It's, uh, it, it can affect a game, right? So you just don't want to be... You don't want to be the one who does that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so while generally non-disclosure agreements are not that enforceable, uh, most people will follow them because... They really don't want to interfere with the success, right? I mean, Deadlocked HD came out, what, two years ago? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, I mean, they're, they, they, the, the, the game has a potential shelf life, and they don't necessarily want people talking about it. Because mm. uh, it's not necessarily that they're worried about people saying, oh, well, something changed, and that would hurt the game. It's just that saying nothing is much safer than saying things and accidentally saying something that does hurt the sales, you know? Yeah. Like, let's say um, let's say there was a disgruntled employee, right, who came in with a very negative point of view that didn't necessarily reflect the whole studio. Well, the whole studio won't be able to talk against him because they're bound by the same non-disclosure. Right, that that yeah, okay, broke. fair enough. So it, yeah, so it ends up being uh, just a like a common courtesy thing that you do for your former employers or for your current employers, you know? And then the other thing is, you you sign those so that while you're working on the stuff, you don't end up uh, sort of with the problem Peter Molyneux has, where he talks about it too much and people get their hopes up, and yeah. then when when things have to be cut and they always do, then people are disappointed. Whereas if they didn't know about it and it gets cut, then they're just excited for what's there, uh, and it has really impacted him. So I think a lot of people just look at that and say, well, I guess I don't want to be as forthcoming because I don't want to end up like that. Mm. You know, where, where a journalist confronts you and asks you if you're a pathological liar. Right. I, I have a question about the PS4 Ratchet have, on, on this subject. And obviously, I, I f fully understand if you cannot answer this. Um, and I'm not expecting you to tell me what it is, but do you know if there's anything that's actually been cut? Like, obviously not saying what it is, but do you know, do you uh, know have, if there's... Have a, I have anything? no idea. Fair enough. That isn't something I would know, Fair like, because uh, I worked just on the the features I worked on, which was uh, Clank and a few of the boss battles, mm. and uh, uh, the the rest of it I just either didn't know about, or since this was 2014, end of 2014 when I did this, so it's been a a year since I've seen it too. So that would have been the time in which they would have cut anything. So since you've worked on bosses. My question for you, and this is fine now because it's public knowledge, how long have you known about nefarious, n human nefarious being in the game? Because I assume Tony, that's a boss at some point. Tony and I designed that fight. Really? Yeah. So, interesting. So, you've known that since middle, early last year. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, since late 2014. Yeah, nice. We were, ex we were excited. Uh, that's one of the main reasons I brought Tony on board for design. Was I was like Tony, we need you to do Nefarious again. Because uh, Tony, Tony did the original Nefarious. Yes, he did yeah. with the gorgeous lasers. And nobody understands Nefarious like Tony understands Nefarious. 
It's really interesting that he's a human, though. Because, like, I mean, it was only ever shown in the Quark vid comics how he changed. So it's interesting that they're actually presumably going to show it in this game. So that's cool. I, I actually didn't know about that. Like, I didn't know anything about what he'd look like. Mm. Uh, we just knew sort of the, the, the details that we need to know to make a fight. Right, fair enough. Yeah. It's interesting that you don't even know, like, what it looks like per se. You just know what it does. I haven't even seen the movie yet. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not going to see it till everybody else does. I'm very so, excited uh, for it, though. It's next yeah, me too. Yeah. It's so soon. 